Hey, come see us on tour. Be in Tempe, Arizona, Burbank, California, and we're going to be in Honolulu, January 11th. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets. Teamsters are not going to endorse for president. You know why? Because they took a vote and they overwhelmingly went for Donald Trump. Ha! No! Yep. Uh, the electronic member poll, Trump 59%. Kamala Harris, 34. This decision comes just two days after union leaders and members met privately with Kamala Harris, who was, a, of course, they met privately, because if they met publicly, someone might have actually ask her a question with Kamala Harris, who was apparently unsuccessful in winning some of them over. No kidding. She's so persuasive. She almost got a vote once when she ran for president. This is the first time in about three decades that the Teamsters will not endorse a candidate, a blow to the Democratic Party, as reported by the Washington Post. The Teamsters have a strong presence in battleground states and can play an outsized role in the election, Washington Post reports. The video below, this video I'm about to play, is of Teamsters President Sean O'Brien earlier this month. Whatever the critics out there, and there are very few in the leadership, um, Whenever I get an opportunity to highlight the American worker, especially the Teamster worker, I'm going to take any and all venue. We asked both conventions respectively at the same time, and the Republican uh, National Convention uh, immediately responded to us, didn't try and edit any of our messages, um, and I was hopeful that the Democrats would do the same, but they didn't. Uh, I'm not upset about it, but I can tell you this, my rank and file members who have been lifelong Democrats are not happy about it. Yeah, I know there were uh, some members of the union who spoke, but that's not the same as having the leader of the organization speak. Uh, very quickly, did you choose to speak at the Republican convention, which is a, a pretty unusual move for a, a union leader, because you feel that Trump has been more pro-labor than past Republican nominees? No, not at all. I, I spoke there because it was the ability to highlight how important we are. It was the ability to call out the people, the corporate elitists, um, who forget who built this country, the American workers. You know, people like to, you know, have their own opinions on why we were there, but I was there to talk about the American workers. It wasn't an endorsement for any and all Republicans. It was strictly a message about how important and how valuable we are. Look how important and valuable that pocket <laughs> kerchief is. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did you grab that off a 16th century uh, monarch? Where did, look, where'd you get that? Did King Louis the 16th give that to you? Look at that thing. That's a little over the top, sir. Okay, here we go. I mean, I love a pocket square. A square. That That's a little too much. Anyway, that's like that's almost like wearing an ascot. Mm -hmm. that, that's very close. He doesn't have a tie on, but he has that. Anyway, I, I like Hey, Here we go. To let the people know that fight us every day, that we're not going away. So uh, Kurt Mexican joins us. Kurt, we're talking about how the Teamsters uh, decided not to endorse a presidential candidate this year. Crazy. Uh, because they took an electronic member poll and 60, almost 60 percent of them went for Trump. Huh. Wow. So what does that mean? That the, they're just going to tell the members vote for who you want or they're <laughs> and they're, and they're not going to say this is our official who we like for the union. Yeah, I mean? guess. So why wouldn't they then endorse Donald Trump if if that's how they're so they can only endorse the democrat if the democrat wins their internal poll is that how it goes that that that's what that sounds like right am i making this yeah. up yeah i'm sure they wanted to i mean the, isn't the teamsters like a long it infiltrated by the dem like the democrats own that for the longest time i i i guess so i you know i never paid much attention the teamsters i knew growing up were always republicans but well, they didn't like Kennedy, but but since then, like the eighties and nineties and shit, I thought the Teamsters was. Did they ever go for Republicans? I don't remember that in my lifetime. Oh, okay. Well, here, I mean, I, yeah, they so, shouldn't really endorse anyone. You should let the people fucking. I, I yeah, I'm with you. Well, I mean, you know, they're supposed to endorse who they think who is going to be more on the side of the labor, right? Uh, yeah. Watch this, but let's remind let's remind people how the Democrats the Democrats are not the party of rich people. Oh, As I know. We, I talked to one of my rich friends today who was, uh, I didn't see the PBS. What's the PBS one we did? Or was I not there for it? The PBS the, video that you put? Oh, yeah. We did a, P, like, a PBS video about uh, Springfield, Ohio, and they documented that, you know, dropping 20,000 uh, foreigners into a, a community of 60,000 people is going to have some pretty uh, uh, bad effects. 
That's what I'm yeah, talking rich, about. I had a rich friend who was upset, like that you were picking sides, uh, and I'm like, I, I doubt that that was what the that I was picking. You mean that I played a PBS news report about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't remember that one. I, I must have not seen that one. But I, I was like, I, I'm sure you want. But it's a friend who's rich. Every rich person knows less than poor people now. I don't know how that's possible. But they're like hillbillies. All my friends in New York or LA that have any level of success where they hang out with famous people, they are, they know nothing. I mean, they know nothing except like whatever emotional thing that they focus on at the time. Yeah, so I he, know my friend, like, is that really the thing that you're worried about? Like, hey, remember when it was the not racist thing to do to say Chinese people eat bats? Remember that was how you prove you're not a racist? Yeah. That's, like, say, no, they don't have science labs that can work on viruses. They eat dirty bat soup. That's the non-racist. <laughs> and now you're upset because someone spread a rumor, but that's the worst rumor. I unbelievable. It's been bothering me the whole day, actually. Um, so here you want to know how the Democrats lost the working class because the working class aren't Democrats anymore. Just so you know, which is another reason why they're allowing open borders so they can make new Democrats. Uh, yeah, Democrats care more about people that are not from here than the people that live on the floor in. I'm imagining my buddy in New York right now <laughs> stepping over a guy on the fucking ground while they worry about Haitians in Springfield. Yes. Watch this. For every blue-collar Democrat we will lose in Western PA, we will pick up two, three uh, moderate Republicans in the suburbs of Philadelphia. And you can repeat that in Ohio and Illinois and Wisconsin. <laughs> Now you can go fuck yourself because that ain't going to happen now. So that, that, that was the leader of the Democrats who said that right before Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump. Hey, I don't care if we lose blue-collar voters. We're, we are now a party of white-collar Republicans. He's saying it yeah. right there. For every blue-collar Democrat we will lose in Western PA, we will pick up two, three... Uh, moderate Republicans in the suburbs of Philadelphia. And you can repeat that in Ohio and Illinois and Wisconsin. So their their electoral strategy is to target moderate Republicans, not working class people, not blue suburban. collar people. He said suburban. He said suburban. Right, suburban. What they don't understand is that doesn't exist no more, thanks to these people. You don't have no suburban, moderate Republicans. You got rich ones. That's all you got left, idiot. And people call me a right winger. This guy is that he was the head of the Democratic Policy Committee chair, and he says we're ba we're going after re Republicans. We're not. Yeah, we're not. So, yeah. We're getting rid of the working class. Don't need the the dirty, unwashed, the despicables, as MSNBC ham colored shirt wearing toilet brush head people say. I commend the courage of Liz Cheney and her father Dick Cheney. I, As a liberal, yeah, I, I wouldn't be right wing and go against Dick Cheney, Jimmy, like a right winger. How does that? How did that video of the toilet brush haired, ham sh colored shirt wearing asshole on MSNBC calling half the country despicable, like Daffy Duck? Yeah, how did that not get a million views? I, I, I it, so what's supposed to happen during the election? Is we're supposed to get more views. It's just like Christmas. We're supposed to get more views. They have ratcheted down the algorithm on our show because we're considered borderline content. They have they have ratcheted down the algorithm so hard on our show that it's not even funny. What? I guess it was Susan's dying wish. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, come see us on tour. Be in Tempe, Arizona, Burbank, California, and we're going to be in Honolulu, January 11th. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets.